If you're anything like me, when you see dumb stuff at a store, you have to have it. This is from Five Below. It's a light up thing. It takes two AA batteries. Obviously I couldn't pass it up. The problem with devices like this, or this, or this, which is a little light up unicorn. Why do I have to have stuff like this? I don't know. The problem with these is they're battery powered most of the time. And buying batteries is very annoying. You leave the switch on overnight, next thing you know it doesn't come on, and you have to buy more batteries for it, therefore it ends up costing you more money. So today I'm gonna show you how to rewire your dumb devices with some sort of power source, whether it be a wall adapter from Amazon or a USB cable. This way we can ensure that all of our silly things are powered up and we never have to buy batteries for them ever again. To do this, we're gonna need a multimeter of some sort. It doesn't have to be fancy, it just has to tell you how much voltage the item is using. A small Phillips of some sort is recommended and just general wiring knowledge. Although I will do my best to explain all this to you so you know how to do it yourself. Since this is the latest ridiculous thing I've bought myself for no reason, we're gonna convert this one first. Got ourselves a little Goomba here. On and off switch, underneath it, you'll see the battery port. Use a Phillips head to take the battery cover off. And we are dealt with a cavity for two AAA batteries. Isn't that fantastic? All right, so a AAA battery. This is a one and a half volt power source. Therefore, when we hook two of them up together, we now have a three volt power source. Typically devices like this are wired up in series, so it's safe to assume that this guy is a three volt power source. However, we're going to test that. We're just gonna go ahead and take off this bottom cover here. I put my batteries in and then just pry off this lower cover header somehow. So here's what we have. This is the positive side with a little capacitor and then we have the switch going to the LED which is inside of the Goomba here and then our negative coming back out. So the full path is positive, negative, positive, negative. So I'm gonna take a multimeter and I'm just gonna confirm. All right, there you go. We have 2.9 volts telling us that this little guy wants three. Now you wanna pay attention to how this is wired up as well. Positive, bridge, negative. So the way that we're going to convert this guy is with the use of a wall adapter. This three volt power supply is like five bucks on Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the description and it comes with a plug end like this. I got a pack of four extensions on Amazon as well and I think it was ten dollars for all four of them. I'll leave the link for that one below as well. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the extension to the power supply and then I'm going to take the power supply and plug it in. Break out the meter again. And with these power supplies, usually the outer casing is negative and the inner is positive. So I'm just gonna touch the lead to the outer side, touch that lead to the inside. And there you go, we get three and a half volts, DC. Now, if you're worried about using one of these that's three and a half volts compared to three volts, I don't think you have much to worry about. The little mushroom I have here was the exact same as this. Got two one and a half volt batteries in series making three volts. I have this guy hooked up to a USB pushing five volts right now and it's still working just fine. Not that I would recommend that. This is just kind of a test I'm doing. It's been on for about two weeks and it hasn't burned out yet. Again, I wouldn't recommend it. I want you to do it this way if you're gonna do anything because at least then we're close to what the starting voltage was and we're not pushing too far ahead. All right, so using some cutters, I cut off the capacitor from the positive side and a wire from the negative side. Now with your power supplies, a lot of times you will get one of these and of the links that I will send you, you get some, some adapters like this. Now what that is going to enable you to do is plug in your extension and just have some ports where you can tap in and get some wires going there. So that's the idea here. I'm just gonna run this positive wire right into the positive port until it's nice and tight. And then I stripped off a little bit of this negative wire. And now we should have positive negative lined up just perfectly. And I wanted to do it this way so that the switch would still work. If I just hardwired it in there, as soon as you plugged it into the power port, you it would be on. But this way, if I want, I can still use the switch on there, which retains its functionality. So what we need to figure out now is how to mount this adapter. And for that, I'm gonna use a rotary tool and just cut away at this outer section right in the battery box, just kind of make a little slot in it so that the power supply will still sit flush on this bottom pad here. 
Okay, we now have a nice hole, and that actually worked very well. It didn't gum up the little stone or anything. So now our adapter can sit right there. The wires can be contained. The only thing left to do, I'm gonna notch out a little bit of this ridge here, and then I'm gonna make a hole on the back side. So I'm gonna use some hot glue. I'm gonna put this piece of cardboard from the box under it, just so I don't get any goobers all over my toolbox. I'm gonna put a dab of glue right there, and then just sit this dude right in it for a little while. Wait for it to dry. All right, might not be as clean as I was expecting, but you know what? I think we're in business here. I'm gonna run the screws back in. I think it's time for the moment of truth. I got my extension, plug it in the back. Nice and secure. Well, Goomba, are you gonna work? Oh yeah, just perfect. So what about for our next guy here? This time we have three AAA batteries. The adapter that I showed you a little while ago, if that's three volts, is that gonna be good enough for this dude? Probably not. So we're gonna have to think a little bit differently with this guy and how we're going to wire him up. So just like in the last one, they have the batteries hooked up like this, negative, positive, and then they fold them, negative, positive. So what I really need to figure out is which one of the negatives and which one of the positives they are using. So let me try something. I'm gonna take my multimeter gonna set it to resistance or continuity. They have continuity between those posts. No continuity between those posts. No continuity between those posts. So these two are bridged together like that. Let me flip it over, try the same deal on the other side. Start with these. Nope, nope, yep. So these two are bridged together. It means I have an independent and an independent when it comes to continuity checks. This one just so happens to be a positive and this one is a negative. And I think that's all I really need to know about at this point. But what about the five volts? For that, we're gonna get creative and use a USB cable. This one just so happens to be a USB-C. So if you have a cable that you don't mind destroying for this part, because you're gonna destroy it, we're gonna take the USB-C end off of it and leave the one that typically goes into the wall. Make sure it's not plugged in while you do this. And very carefully, I'm gonna try to take some of that insulation away. So I'm just gonna take little nibbles out of it as I rotate the wire. I don't just wanna chop into this thing because there's lots of wires in there. There we go. These USB-C cables usually put out about five volts. Let me just strip a little bit of the ends off this. Okay, so I have one of these charger block thingies. I'm gonna plug the cable into it. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna spread these dudes out real far so they don't touch each other. Then I'll plug it in. Take the meter, power it on, make sure it's in volts. 5.195.2 volt. Unplug this so we're safe. All right, so we have positive negative here, putting out five volts. We have three one and a half volt batteries wired in series, which gives us four and a half volts. All we're gonna try to do is solder positive into this side, the negative end to that side, so that we get a five volt power supply. Now, yes, again, four and a half volts, five volts, it's a little bit over. It's not terrible, but it's a little bit over. So don't do this unless you don't really worry about it. I think we're gonna be fine, but if you're concerned with it, I certainly wouldn't do it, which is a good rule of thumb for everything. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna solder this negative one just straight on to that little negative spiral duty. So I'm gonna make a little hook with the wire, fish it right through the center. And there we go. We have our wire secured. Plug in the power supply, turn these lights off, and then flick it on. That looks like a USB powered candle if you ask me. All right, so that was a little bit of a departure from the automotive car stuff that I typically do, but this is a pretty common occurrence around my house. I try to get things rigged up to where they work in a way that they were never intended to work. I don't have an issue with batteries. I just think they're kind of wasteful. Yes, I know there are rechargeable batteries out there, but why buy those and have to recharge them when you could just use a USB cable to do the same exact thing? I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight that there are other ways and you can find uses for this general idea or this general concept all over the place. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching.